All right, technical analysis of behavior and behavioral finance trends and corrections. Um, a moving average. An average price over a given interval, and the interval is updated over time. This attempts to identify underlying price direction. So, uh, for example, you can have a 50 day moving average where you have the price over the previous 50 days. Um, and, and we can plot this on a chart and see you know, if it matches with what the stock price does or, or if it doesn't. And so, an example of that, and this is an Intel one. You can kind of see that the 50 day moving average kind of does to an extent, except for when you see these large gaps like between uh, A and B. Um, and so you see it kind of flattened out. It certainly went down, but it didn't, it wasn't nearly as drastic as what it was before. It kind of makes a nice curve line rather than what the actual share price is doing. And this is uh, from Intel, the 50 day average in May of 2017, it looks like. And here's another example of moving averages for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. They have a five week moving average um, where they run basically the prior five weeks. So this 21,380 is the average of these five weeks. This 21,424 is average between weeks two and six. 21,448 would be between weeks three through seven and so on and so forth um, where we're having a moving, a moving average uh, based on five weeks. And you can kind of see that just smooth things out. And it's based on more numbers, right? If you're basing it off of a five week period or a 50 day period, not doing a single snapshot of a single time, you're giving it for a time frame, which I think is, is uh, the, kind of one of the purposes of doing these moving averages instead of just single times. Um, this is a stock price uh, history for, what did I say who this was for? What does it say? But this is, Oh, this is an example of 50 day. How many days we got here? One, two, three. Yeah, it's gotta be 50 days or so. Yeah, um, of 50 day running average. And um, you can see that while there might be drastic day-to-day -day changes, um, if we plotted this chart, it would look a lot smoother than what a typical market uh, price would do or what you're even seeing here. Um, all right, trends and corrections. Um, Traces, uh, point and figure charts trace significant upward and downward movements in prices without regard to timing. Um, so an X denotes a price increase, a circle denotes a decrease. Sell and buy signals are generated when stock penetrates at previous highs or lows. Um, if there's a congestion area on the band of X's and O's, this creates price reversals. So an example of that using the information we just had would be um, here. This diagram has four columns and nine rows. The bottom row is labeled 34, that's the price. The next, it rose to 36. Um, the price rose to 36, then to 38, and so on, um, and it kept rising. So this would be when it was 42, it went from 42 to 40. This 44 here was when it went from 44 to 42. So this would be a de these are the decreases and these are the increases. So um, the stock fell $2, you know, several different times, and, and they did it in $2 increments here. So every time you see an X and a diagonal below it, O, that means that's where the price fell from. Um, and when you see the opposite, when you see it up, then that means that's where the price came from and rose back up to um, in this price and figure chart. So this is where you can see um, overall the congestion, the support, where they had a small rally. You can see uh, all the X's here. Um, you can see here where they it, it met resistance. You had a lot of up and down and up and down. Then you have the congestion um, up here uh, where you've got a lot of kind of moving around up at the top, kind of above where it usually is. Um, and then this is the where, where the stock price is oftentimes supported. Lots of different ways it could be supported, but usually by either dividends or by um, uh, stock buybacks or stock splits or stock uh, offerings. All right, more trends and corrections. Uh, the breadth, the extent to which the broad market index movements affects individual stock prices. Um, so how much does the market index affect your stock price? It kind of almost, it's almost like creating a beta for, um, you know, whatever investment stock that you have in particular. Uh, the relative strength, uh, recent performance of given stock industry compared with that of the broad market index. So how did the, you know, your stock perform compared to the industry and also how did it perform compared to the broad market or the market indexes? So this is um, uh, markets uh, diary issues. 
So we got advancing, declining, and this is for um, the number of advancing and declining uh, and unchanged stocks are given for the New York Stock Exchange. So how many advanced, how many went up, how many declined, and how many were unchanged for the day. Um, and then also for the NASDAQ and also for the NYSE. Um, this also gives you uh, information about the 52 week highs and lows and the share volumes. So 52 week high and 52 week low. And so you can see a variance between how much. And then here you've got how much is being traded on each, on each one, on each market. So the breadth, we're talking about the, the, the total difference between advances and declines and whether we have a net advance or net decline uh, for day one versus day two. Um, and, and then the cumulative breadth of, of all of it. Um, so this, this would be like a running over here. This would be like a, a running total. So we'd have this day one, we've got 54 advance. And then, so we got 54 up here. We had 54 and 277 to get our 331. Subtract 69 to get our 262 for a cumulative breadth, negative 610 takes us down to negative 348 and so on and so forth. This would be my kind of my running total column for cumulative breadth. All right, sentiment uh, indicators. So trend statistic, the ratio of average volume and declining issues to uh, average volume and advancing issues. So who's buying when and are we buying more uh, in volume if the numbers are declining or advancing? That's my trend statistic. So my ratio of volume declining and number declining is the volume advancing and number advancing. So are people buying when it's going up or selling when it's going up and are people buying when it's going down or selling when it's going down? Um, the confidence index, the ratio of top corporate bond yields to intermediate grade bond yields. So um, that that's, has to do with um, our, the pot, how well we think, how likely we think these debt instruments are to go bad. Um, usually the better the economy, the higher the corporate bond rates and even the intermediate bond rates or bond yields are better uh, because the likelihood of default is lower. Um, when the economy is doing poorer, when the market is not doing as well, you're typically to see a, a, a greater distance between um, the ratio of top rate corporate bonds versus the uh, intermediate grade bonds. Short interest, the total number of shares currently sold, short sold in the market. Um, we talked about short sales in the prior chapter. And put and call ratios, the ratio of options to call, call options outstanding on stock. A warning, people perceive patterns where none exist. That's very common. We think we know where something's gonna go and it's not necessarily always the case. Data mining generates apparent patterns within limited data sets. You gotta be careful, make sure that our data sets are complete and large, um, and, but not too large. It needs to be the right size for whatever statistical analysis we're running on it. When evaluating rules, ask whether a rule would be reasonable uh, before looking at the data or not. Okay, the actual level of stock prices in, 52, in a 52 week period. Um, you can see this varies quite a bit from 485 to 4 or 525 um, with, some, with some quite large peaks and valleys. This is a simulated stock price that you had, uh, price levels of 52 weeks. So this is what the simulation said. And overconfidence in this probably led to the larger swings that we saw on the prior chart. The actual stock prices uh, for 52 weeks for the stock price changes. And this is a simulated weekly stock price change. So you can see whether they're similar or not exactly the same. We kind of wish they overlaid these with one another, but it's okay. Okay, and that's it for chapter nine.